Alright. Ja, góðan daginn allir. Velkomin á þennan föstas fyrirlestur. Eh, nú verum við hérna Dieter sem ætlar að fara yfir Azure eh, Monitor og Automation. Og þetta verður mjög skemmtilegt eh og fræðandi. Þanna ég ætla bara að gefa honum orðið. Eh, thank you for eh uh, giving us your time Dieter. Uh, we are very uh, excited to uh, hear you talk about this. So I'll just give you the torch and you can go on. Yeah, thank you. I had no clue what you were saying, but I hope it was positive, so that's fine. It was positive, yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, put up my my PowerPoint real quick. Hold on. Now I have to switch screens, of course. So I think, is it clear? Uh, are you seeing my screen? Just to make sure that I'm not starting without you seeing my screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay cool. So let's get this started. Um, thanks first of, all, first of all for having me. Uh, I think it's it's probably my first session uh, for an Icelandic uh, user group, so that's uh, a first for me as well in I think almost 10 years. Um, the session today we're going to talk about is basically how you're going to uh, get a lot of things done with automation in Azure Monitor. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Dieter Wegnos. I know it's it's very hard to pronounce, but I saw <laughs> I've seen Icelandic names uh, which are also very hard for me. So we're in the same boat. Uh, I'm from Belgium. Um, my uh, my profession at this point is I'm a managing consultant um, at a company called Obvious, which I founded I think six or seven years ago, where we basically do a lot of um, workspace or work environment automation, but also Azure automation and Azure governance. Um, I have a large, let's say, monitoring background, so I have a huge interest in Azure monitor and automation, how to, well, get things done uh, with uh, less and mouse clicks as possible. I've put my Twitter handle on here, I've put my email on here, and even the website, so I'm not that good at hiding online. So if you want to reach out during or after the session, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, I will be happy to answer some questions. Um, I'm a CDM uh, MVP, so that's Cloud and Data Center Management since 2014. <coughs> While uh, when all the things I'm touching today or discussion today uh, didn't even exist um, eight years ago, um, we could just run some Azure VMs, and that was it. So now we have a huge framework where we can manage them and automate them as well. In the middle, I've put well up a small picture of one of my hobbies. I have a, I have two old timers that I try to keep on the road. Uh, well, it's always nice to do something with your hands instead of doing something with your mind. Um, well, I always start my sessions with a motto: it's doing common things uncommonly well that brings success. Um, it's one of the things that I always try to do. Um, if you focus on the little things, you will basically um, get results in the long run instead of focusing right away on the big things. I have, today I have, let's say, 45 to one hour uh, content. I really like to ask whether, if you have a question, please feel free to break in or uh, put it in the chat um, or have the Q&A afterwards. But uh, don't be shy or anything just to ask questions during a demo or a slide or anything. If I can't answer them right away, of course, I will take it offline afterwards. <coughs> so the agenda for today is, well, quite broad, but still uh, I will try to go through the slides as quick as possible uh, to show you some demos, of course. Um, so first of all, we're going to see what components are we going to do, what components are we going to use? Um, there are a lot of components which are introduced on a daily basis. So we need to make sure that we pinpoint uh, the components what we're going to use. We're going to look at the process for the monitoring or just to have the triggers ready for automation. So how to get started. And last but not least, of course, we will dive into uh, the portal and show you all the ins and outs. And key takeaways are one of the important things that sometimes I miss during sessions. It's always good to have some key takeaways that you can take in your day-to-day uh, -day of life uh, environment. So let's dive in. First of all, what components? It's a Azure user group, so I assume that you know 
that there are a lot of things uh, moving services and uh, and so on within the Azure environment. So the Azure environment has a lot of components, which from time to time were also called building blocks. So in order to build a fully automated monitoring scenario, which is both detected, reported and remediated, we need several Azure building blocks, components working together. I will take a moment to go over those building blocks just to make sure that you pinpoint or position them correctly. And then we will work around a, a central scenario through the session. That central scenario basically can change from time to time. But it's it's very important that you know that we instantly have that word here uh, already, which is the scenario. Um, even from my uh, system center operations manager uh, background, uh, every monitoring or every, let's say, monitoring a rule or question is a scenario. If this happens, then this needs to be done or that person needs to be um, alerted. So. so if we if we talk about Microsoft Azure, we have a lot of data coming in. It used to be different, but now uh, all the different resources that you deploy have different, uh, let's say, data, data streams. So we need to capture those data streams to get data how our, let's say, resources are doing. So we have real-time correlation and analytics. We have built-in operational visibility, flexible turnkey integration, and of course, actionable app aware insights. Uh, those are the things that we need to actually start building our monitoring scenario. Um, in the blue ribbon, we have the application insights, law analytics, and monitor. Uh, those are, let's say, our executions. Those are already some of the uh, applications that will give us some insights. I'm not saying all insights, but some insights on the data streams that we basically uh, provide. Of course, we need to ingest the data and then we can actually use it uh, to check on the uh, apps, the middleware, backend operating system, virtual machine, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a slide which I really want to emphasize. It's not the building blocks, but it's just a scenario from left to right. So if we start here. Let's see. We start here. The data is coming through here, which is our data layer. It's processed, for example, here in Lohan Analytics. More on that later in a demo, but the data is processed through Log Analytics, and then you can actually get all the data from here. So it's a two-way stream. And in here, you can actually use it in Azure Monitor, or you can use it in Application Insights. And then we need to go to, let's say, the next level, which is um, the alerting, or in fact, so I'm not that good at writing with a mouse, sorry. Uh, with, let's say, uh, the other components. But this is our core business. This is the core that we need to get the monitoring going. So what are the building blocks? Uh, we're going to take a brief moment just to go over the building blocks we're going to use in our scenario today. Um, I'm not saying that it's limited to these building blocks. There are uh, multiple building blocks um, out there as well. So you need to basically use what you're used to and what actually solves your issue. Um, <clears throat> some of the building blocks I used in the past were phased out or migrated. Uh, that's a possibility as well. Even in my demo today, I had some issues preparing because a small component which I used just uh, well vanished from the Azure portal. But uh, we all know that that happens from time to time. So we need to, let's say, adapt to that. But the uh, building blocks I'm using today, uh, Azure Monitor, Azure Log Analytics, Azure Automation, Azure Action Groups, they basically are around already a long time. And I'm, in my personal opinion, I don't see them changing or, or migrating um, away uh, very soon. It could well be that they got renamed, which is uh, one of the most uh, well uh, practi practiced hobbies of uh, Microsoft marketing, but still the core will still be the same. So you have Azure Monitor, Azure Log Analytics, Azure Automation, and Azure Action Group. It's quite, uh, let's say, <coughs> funny because in fact, they are uh, in here, they are um, categorized from the oldest to the newest. 
meaning Azure Monitor is around already for a long time. Log Analytics as well. Log Analytics, I think it started uh, five or six or even seven years ago. Uh, it was renamed, I think, four or five times. Azure Automation is in there also a long time, but got renamed also a couple of times. And Azure Action Groups is well, something new or new-ish. It's already around for one and a half year, but it's a very powerful tool to actually notify people in your scenario, which is very important. If you have a scenario and you don't, let's say, notify people, you're just screaming in a, in a forest and nobody's hearing you. So first things first, uh, Azure Monitor. I think this is a well-known slide, but um, from time to time it gets updated. So on the left, you have the applications, the operating systems, resources, subscriptions, and tenants, and even custom sources. And those operating systems, they can also be, let's say, outside of your environment. So this is a very powerful tool to get data in. The stores here, they are actually, um, let's say, uh, Log Analytics. So uh, Azure Monitor is built on Log Analytics. And then last but not least, we will actually see here the different stages. We see the insights, the visualization, the analysis, um, the response and the integration. Um, again, it could well be that there are tools on here, if you see this recording afterwards, that already vanished or that there were uh, tools added. Uh, but if you go into the, the Azure portal or the Microsoft Docs, you will get a full view of what is available at the time when you want to basically start creating your scenario. Again, you see here that we have a flow from left to right. So we have our data sources in here. We have our storage or our temporary storage or our repository here. So that's our repository. And then we can go and use that data basically for the insights, the visualization, the analysis, the response and the integration. Keep an eye on these different stages because these different stages are basically what holds um, a monitoring scenario. So what is Azure Monitor? Azure Monitor um, well, consists of two uh, huge well, uh, different uh, streams. First of all, we have logs. It's based on our data explorer. It's optimized for analysis and the logs are just plain, uh, plain small lines and uh, keeping or having a lot of, let's say, type data in there. It's indexed for past searching. And it's basically your main source for monitoring and insights. Um, if something, uh, if you want to have a custom log in there, you just need to have a, a name for it, a couple of fields that you want to fill in, and it will be indexed automatically for you. The second one is metrics. Um, metrics is not that old as logs. They added it, or Microsoft added it, um, let's say, um, a couple of years after. And it's a time series database. It's optimized for performance. Uh, it's focused towards getting a value or a research at a given time to plot, meaning uh, to create um, archives, uh, to create graphics or graphs. But it's also a very growing source to actually see what's going on. And also a hugely used trigger for, let's say, your monitoring scenarios. It is in the background saved in a different DBase uh, for faster plotting. I have to recheck that, but, but they were working on the fact that they wanted to merge the DBases, but I'm not quite sure in the back end whether that's already done. So that is Azure Monitor. Azure Monitor is using Azure Log Analytics. So Azure Log Analytics is quite easy, just an index DBase or an index depository, repository for you that will actually allow you to interactively query with the KQL language. I hope it's familiar, otherwise I will show some, uh, some I will definitely show some queries afterwards. But it's basically, uh, again, a repository that has been indexed and then a queryable uh, via KQL, which is well, very um, similar to SQL queries. It takes some time to accustom to that, but those queries are really powerful to get your insights and also trigger your monitoring scenarios. It's basically also the same language that is used all across 
um, all across Azure, for example, in Sentinel and everything, KQ, KQL queries are, if, if there's one thing that you need to dive into that you didn't uh, see or didn't learn yet, it's KQL language, to be honest. Um, it will give you also the possibility for smart analytics. So it's correlating different data streams, which sometimes was very hard to do, but it will give you the possibility to have machine learning and advanced constructs as well. And of course, it will give you a lot of integration. It's very easy to actually uh, collect data from multiple sources, the multi-vendor solutions, even custom, let's say, uh, sources, which will automatically be indexed in the Azure Law Analytics. You don't have to provide uh, a SQL DBase. You don't have to think about, let's say, um, opening your SQL DBase to the outside world, because this is already an Azure, let's say, service. And that Azure service will give you the possibility to actually bump it right in and it will take care of all the indexing. Again, a slide with a small disclaimer because the solutions have come and go. Um, they are still out there, but Microsoft is, is moving away from solutions and it's giving you more query packs instead of solutions. But again, you see here that the ingestion is there. The ingestion can be done through the Microsoft monitoring agent even an operation uh, system center operations management pack. Um, you can uh, run through an API, Linux, whatever. It's a very open system to actually get <coughs> to get data in. Then you can explore the data, of course, because it's, it has no sense of, well, having a lot of data and then not explore it. And of course, you can visualize it and then export and correlate it. Um, just to emphasize that Log Analytics again, is uh, central uh, central point of uh, keeping all your data and making sure that you can uh, look for those um, let's say scenarios which are coming up on top of azure log analytics of course we have azure monitor and azure monitor well this is wrong it needs to be on the next slide but still uh, Azure Monitor is basically your environment. Uh, that, this is Azure Automation, the title is wrong. Uh, so Azure Automation, it delivers the cloud-based automation operating system updates and configuration services. Um, it really started with running just PowerShell scripts as uh, a worker. And now Azure Automation has grown into, let's say, your first step or your first part of um, automation within Azure. So there are a lot of things which are already automated out of the box. You just have to, let's say, um, increase or just, um, well, uh, turn on, for example, update management. If you choose to use update management in Azure, it's completely built on Azure automation. And the Azure automation will take care of the scheduling. It will have runbox in the back end. Um, it's, it's a pretty cool tool, but it's again built on the Azure Automation, which is a very powerful engine. And it's also, of course, integrating with a lot of services and a lot of things uh, within uh, the Azure framework, for example, Azure Arc, Azure Alerts. Um, we're going to talk about Azure Alerts and Azure Monitor here, but you see that there's a lot of integration. And Microsoft has spent a lot of time integrating a lot of different tools and a lot of different, let's say, uh, environments into centralized systems. And two of those centralized systems is law analytics and, well, automation. A lot of projects or a lot of uh, companies or engineers are overlooking uh, these two powerful tools. So if there's one, well, let's say, um, key takeaway I want to, to give you is that you really uh, need to look into uh, these tools uh, instead of trying to figure out something yourself because a lot of scenarios a lot of automation is already uh, pinpointed uh, through azure automation last but certainly not least is um, azure action groups uh, when i started using uh, log analytics and azure monitor it was just possible to basically uh, do webhook and send the mail or an SMS if he had an SMS uh, provider. Um, one of the things which uh, really, well, was an eye opener was the fact that um, you you could only do one task uh, per uh, alert rule. Now, 
you have an Azure Action Group and you can create those Azure Action Groups centrally and you can use them with different, uh, let's say, alert tools. And there's a huge advantage there because then you can, well, have an action group for different, uh, let's say, severities uh, for different people and you can send uh, different mails to different people. So depending on your requirements, you can configure various alerts to use the same action group or different action groups um, based on your scenario, basically. So you see here that there's a help monitor, there's an alert. Again, we are coming through the same cycle. So an alert is, is raised here. The alert is notified. You say that it's severe enough to notify. And then here, the action group will actually use an Azure function, log logic app, automation runbook, more on that later. The ITSM connector, that's also a powerful tool that a lot of people are forgetting. So it's quite easy to um, link your used ITSM um, tool or whatever in your environment um, actually to um, Azure um, to an Azure action group and then you can send tickets right from uh, Azure to your on-premise environment uh, integrating your um, cloud environment your cloud footprint with the on-premise uh, which will be uh, very handy because the NOC or the SOC um, employees will have one console and they will see all the alerts across the different environments. Of course, you have the classics, push email, voice, SMS. I personally never uh, heard a voice message uh, of an error in, in Azure, but I can imagine uh, that you really need to think through how uh, and what data you're actually pushing to the voice message, because otherwise it will just be, well, almost impossible to understand. So these are the components we are using today. So we are using the log analytics, again, very powerful. We are using uh, Azure, uh, um, Azure Monitor. We are using Azure Action Groups and Azure Automation just to pinpoint uh, some scenarios. So the standard monitoring flow is quite easy. Um, remember uh, that those also came back in the first slides. So you have detect, you, have, you want to detect that something is off. So first of all, you need to know um, what you want to detect. Um, then you need to alert saying something is wrong. You need to visualize and afterwards it would be awesome that you could remediate automatically that you don't have to call someone at 3 a.m. just to start a VM or restart the service. And then of course you need to report. So if we pinpoint the different tools to the different, let's say, uh, scenarios or the different steps in the process, if you want to detect, you have Azure Monitor. Remember, everything is in the Log Analytics workspace and you want to have alert rules, which are a part of Azure Monitor, just to define that something is off. Of course, you will have an alert. The action groups will take action on that. So Log Analytics will be able to uh, analyze this. Remediation will be done by Azure Automation and a report will be uh, available in Azure Log Analytics through QKL, um, uh, QKL uh, query. Um, I'm just pinpointing these in the scenarios I'm going to show you today, but it's quite possible that you want to visualize an external tool, for example, or you want to remediate not with Azure Automation, but with a Logic App or with a Flow App or with an external script you launch. Um, still, Azure Automation is one of the most powerful tools, but I'm not saying that there are uh, not other tools out there that can actually help you uh, in this scenario. But if you go into monitoring, I think these uh, five stages are the most important. So to come back to the scope of this uh, user group meeting, um, the entry point can be automation, meaning uh, that the logs of automation can also be inserted in log analytics. Um, a lot of customers I come across, uh, they weren't aware that uh, you could even monitor the monitors saying that you could monitor the automation as well. Um, you will get the possibility to report automation flows centrally if you pump it into log analytics. 
you can use automation to remediate automation. It's quite silly, but it happens. Um, if one uh, if one runbook or workflow fails, you can kick off another remediation runbook uh, automatically, and then afterwards evaluate again. And if it still fails, you can uh, send a message. Um, I have uh, decreased a lot of alerts uh, using this method because if, if at one point something fails and you can automatically remediate it, you don't have to uh, have someone check out the ticket, the ticketing go from there. So all tools necessary are already there straight out of the box. And to be honest, they are not the most expensive tools in the toolbox of Azure. Um, for monitor alerts or alert rules, you need to pay a small fee because it's always a query. Uh, in log analytics, <coughs> it depends how many data you pump into your DBase. And for Azure Monitor, um, it depends how, how many times you actually start checking with the alert rules, for example. Monitoring automation is a good practice. I see a lot of people not monitoring their automation and they're monitoring the resources, but the automation itself, they are not monitoring. And at that point, it's kind of silly because of course your uh, runbooks need monitoring as well, because otherwise uh, you can't see what is going on. Uh, automation can also be used in the beginning, the end or both of the process, meaning um, you can of course also use automation based on, let's say, a scenario. <coughs> uh, the scenario here, for example, is let's say that um, a VM is always running uh, above 80% of its CPU. Um, you trigger that with uh, Azure uh, alert rules and through an Azure action group, you say, okay, I'm going to change the size of that VM. Uh, be aware, of course, that that VM needs to be rebooted. So you need to have, let's say, at least the load balancing. But all those things are possible uh, if you do it with, with Azure Automation, for example. So how do you get started? <clears throat> how do you get started? You, you pinpointed your scenario and you just want to get started uh, with, let's say, defining and making sure that the scenario is there. So first of all, of course, you need data. The data is one of the key things. If you don't have data, if you don't have data streams, or you don't know where to get the data to monitor, there is nothing to monitor. It's like that. Then you need to ingest the data into Law Analytics because that's your repository. That's where you keep everything. If you compare it with System Center Operations Manager, uh, Law Analytics is your DBase, your repository. Then use the query to actually find the desired alert feed. Don't be afraid of the KQL. I will show it afterwards that it's, it's quite well easy to actually uh, click and point and have a KQL query created for you. Report and remediate with Azure Automation. And then, of course, um, use the power of the autocorrect or ads or whatever uh, in the automation. So I'm just going to quickly, let's say, dive into uh, my environment. So hold on for a sec. Are there any questions at this time? Uh, one question, uh, okay. just a quick, quick one. Uh, the uh, the workflows that you do uh, are they? Um, does it matter what you use? Uh, are you using uh, like uh, runbooks or are you using uh, logic apps or, or or do you just uh, depends on what you're doing or? Actually, actually, I'm using a lot of uh, just PowerShell scripts and they are runbooks, but it's quite possible to kick off a log logic app or even just kick off something else with webhooks. Um, it's just what you, you feel more comfortable uh, with or what your environment uh, well is the standard, for example. Um, a lot of customers I face or uh, I visit uh, still already have some, let's say, PowerShells available. And they are also using, for example, uh, Azure Automation for on-premises. So they standardize on PowerShell. Uh, some already are exploring PowerShell workflow. 
but uh, it's quite possible you use logic apps or a function or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, if, if you need to start from scratch, I think it's better to look into the Azure functions instead of just doing the PowerShell. Yeah. Uh, PowerShell is here to stay, but it's it's you see that there's a huge, let's say, move towards functions. So if you have to start doing everything from scratch, I recommend that you basically go into look into functions and, and then, well, uh, take PowerShell as a, as a huge backup, for example. Mm -hmm. OK. So this is my uh, environment. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger here. OK. So first things first, what I'm going to show here is what you can actually do to monitor your, um, let's say, your automation runbooks. So if I go to my automation accounts, I have my automation account here, which is Mass uh, Demo Worker. And in here, I already created some, let's say, runbooks, which unfortunately are not running. So I need to monitor them. And it's quite easy to actually pump everything in your Log Analytics workspace. If you go here and you go down to monitoring, you have the diagnostic settings. You have the metrics as well, but these four, uh, let's say options are almost always there for all, let's say, um, uh, resource types. So you have the alerts and here you can uh, automatically start running alert rules. You have the metrics, diagnostic settings, and you have the loss. Uh, this specific small icon here is the icon of uh, the Log Analytics workspace. So everywhere where you see this icon, um, it's quite possible to actually ingest data into your Log Analytics workspace. So if you go into diagnostic settings, you can actually choose where the diagnostic settings uh, need to be pumped to. Um, it used to be just only Log Analytics workspace, but in fact, now you have the possibility. I'm just going to, for demo purposes, going to call it demo. And then here you can actually see that you can archive it to a storage account, meaning that it's in a storage account in flat text and you have to or you can do something with it. You can stream it to an event hub and you can send it to a partner solution. Stream it to an event hub. Event hub is almost the same as Log Analytics Workspace. The only difference is um, that in the Log Analytics Workspace, in my personal opinion, uh, there's a little bit more flexibility basically uh, in the querying while the event hub will give you more integration if you really want to have sequential uh, data out there so for here i'm just calling it demo i want all the logs but you can also just pinpoint what kind of logs you want i also want the metrics and let's say that i do all the logs <coughs> and i'm sending it to log analytics and here you have the possibility to create a workspace if you don't have a workspace yet it will give you the option to, well, create a workspace, but then it will be default workspace, something, something, something. So make a workspace um, up front to make sure that it has a, let's say, valuable name. Again, on the workspaces, you can have as much workspaces as possible, and you can even run a query across workspaces, but it will, well, increase flexibility. The only uh, uh, option or the only, Let's say advice I can give you is if you have a workspace for security uh, reasons or security events, uh, create another one. And for the uh, for all the others, uh, you can create another one because um, it's not possible to have an RBAC uh, system or an RBAC uh, model on a specific type of data. So if you have security data in here, which uh, nobody needs to see except for the security team, Make sure that you have different uh, Log Analytics workspace and put your RBAC system or RBAC model there to restrict access to that one. So if I say here, just put it in my environment, I can also double check and say, okay, I want to have a, an event hub and it will create an event hub. I don't have one in my environment, but it's possible to have multiple streams of the same data. Um, I'm just going to cancel this because I already have one in here, which is this one. And this one is pumping everything in there. So every, every let's say, runbook 
that I use or that I uh, start will actually give me uh, give me um, the data in the log analytics workspace. So let's say in here I have some run books. Just going to run this one. It's probably going to fail. But again, it doesn't matter that it fails because if I go into my log analytics workspace at this point, you see it's this one. Just going to increase my real estate real quick. <clears throat> In here, I have the possibility to actually go into the loss. And I already created some queries. So if I run this query, <coughs> this is actually a quite big query, I guess, because it's taking some seconds. But the Azure Diagnostics is basically the, the first, let's say, thing I want to run. But well, this is my class, Azure Diagnostics. Remember that it was called Diagnostic Settings. So if you know this, you, you can get everything. And then I say, OK, the resource provider is my automation, and I just want to have the job streams. I'm just going to get rid of this because this is for one specific job. This was a test, so it's going to run even longer, but it's going to give me, let's say, the diagnostic settings and everywhere where there was an error. So these are the errors, basically, that came out of it. I'm just going to go revert back to my uh, previous, let's say, query. Just quick. Mm -hmm. So let me check. I just need to go up, up again to my loss. So and then uh, how do I start from here? Because I have my query. I have, well, all the things which are in error. So if I at one point comment this out, this is commenting this out, then I will get everything, even the ones which well, were fine or audit, audit event or whatever. And you can actually see that it consists of a timestamp and then the different categories. And these are very important. Let's say the labels are very important because these will be our, let's say, um, pinpoints or our, our first line to actually start creating the uh, alert rules. So if I go back to my environment and I say, OK, and that's pretty cool because an alert rule, you don't have to go to Azure Monitor to actually start using an alert rule. So you just click New Alert Rule, and then it will take already the query I actually made in the environment. So let's say um, here I want to have um, the condition. OK, so let's say I want to count the table rows. So how many times did it happen? And here the dimension I choose, and I already know it, it's a stream type S. You see here that stream type S, I want to have error. How do I know here that stream type S? Let's go one step back. If I open here, let's say one of the records, I see here, say stream type S. Where is it? That was an error, I think. It's probably not this one. Hold on. Wait, OK, I need the audit events. OK, so I'm just going to go back here and comment this out. And then I can actually see here. This is what I need, so this is basically what I want. I think if I go all the way back, no, I changed it. So I can actually see here, these are the things that I want. So I'm, I want all the logs which have stream type underscore S error. It's not a very self-explanatory name, but still I want to, well, if this is in error, I want to get notified. So I just go to my alert rule. Again, the query has been taken here. So it's, uh, it's again, 
the same query, the table rows, the count. It used to be uh, when I started with using log analytics, it was 10 minutes. Now it's one minute, so that's pretty cool. Stream type S. And here it's already saying, OK, this query is only giving you the errors, so that's fine. And you can see that you can have multiples as well. These behave as an end. Uh, so if you have stream type S and you have this, then you can uh, well have multiple conditions. And here you say it's greater than, and the threshold value over here for me is one. So meaning that um, it's going to check every one minute whether there are more than one uh, work, let's say, uh, run books which failed. In here, it's pretty cool because in here you can already see uh, what the impact could be if I put it on one. So you can change your, let's say, um, your well, value based on what is in here, especially for, let's say, CPU or whatever. It's very handy to actually see that. And then we come to another, well, very powerful thing. That's the actions. Uh, remember the Azure action groups. So in here you can say uh, select an action group. I will actually create one. Again, you can say where it needs to reside. Uh, it's global, otherwise it will stay in Germany or in Sweden. I will say demo on Iceland, for example. And here, in here, I can choose the notification types. So I can send an email, do an action, or send text. It used to be that email was under actions, but it was confusing, so they changed it here. So next actions, action type, and in here, you can run a, a run book, you can have Azure Functions, you can have all the different things. You can even have a secure web hook, logic app. So you can see from an, uh, an automation standpoint, you have the possibility to use a function, a logic app, automation run book. And even when things are not, let's say, in here that you want to run, or even you want to run something on another system, it's quite possible to, to create a web hook or send a web hook and then trigger something else. So it's a very powerful thing. The Azure Action, um, at this point, I just want to have my, let's say, runbook, uh, remediation runbook. So I say here, run runbook. I, I'm going to say, let's say, um, I'm going to talk user in my environment. And in here, I can change or I can run a runbook saying, OK, let's run that runbook again. You can give it parameters and they will be automatically saved. The only thing that you need to take in account that you have to have your run books, let's say, already configured to run with a with a circus principle, for example. So I click OK. I have to have a name, so I say run 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 book. It's almost for its gun. I don't feel in any tags. I say create. And now my alert rule is created, meaning if at one point <coughs> there's an error, I can put my alert name in here as well. Now let's say uh, failed run book. Now I can probably, it's probably created at this point. Yep, it's created. So now my alert rule is done. So I have the entire process. I have my trigger. I have my um, my detection, which is my KQL. I have my action. Uh, I have my my decision. When do I trigger the um, the Azure Automation alert or the alert? And then I can actually go in and uh, have remediation. So if at one point Let's say I can go back. I go back to my automation. And I run, let's say, a run book here, which is, for example, this one. And it's it's not run book specific, meaning that all the data which is in your environment will also be pushed into your um, log analytics workspace. 
So if you have a general, let's say, rule, you own you and you have new runbooks added, it will be automatically uh, well uh, used for those runbooks as well. Meaning that you don't have to go in and specific for every runbook create um, an Azure alert. <coughs> So this when <clears throat> normally when I go into my Log Analytics workspace, again I see here my queries. Hold on, my logs. <clears throat> Just gonna maximize my real estate. I run this query again, and we'll probably see that the results are in there that this failed and then the other runbook will be triggered as well. So job streams, you see, I have to go down. <clears throat> so 11.35, this is the one I triggered right now. And it's failing, <clears throat> so it's in error. So if I go back to my automation it should have run the run the run book but there's nothing in there but i can always see that it has tried to run it so if i go into uh, my run books <clears throat> it failed at 12 24 meaning that uh, the run book which i tried to use as a remediation failed as well but you see that the the process is there <clears throat> to actually have the automation uh, as an entry point. So run your monitoring uh, on your uh, Azure automation and use also Azure automation to actually remediate the Azure automation. And it's the uh, Log Analytics workspace and the Azure monitor uh, environment, which is basically giving you the possibility. Mm -hmm, Azure monitor, where is it? It's called monitor, of course. Uh, that is giving you the possibility to actually go in and, and change the things. So if I look here for the alert rules, I can actually see uh, the alert rules. No, they're not in here, so they probably need to at least come in here. Um, but you can see that you can use two or three different, let's say, uh, tools in sequence to actually um, go in and uh, solve your scenarios. And the scenarios are, are quite broad. Eh? One of the scenarios I used, for example, is, is the failed password attempts. And at that point, you can, uh, if if a user uh, from, from an administrator of account uh, has a lot of uh, failed password attempts, uh, you can actually use a runbook to disable that administration account and then send a mail and say, hey, something's wrong. Um, if you just use the alerting uh, at 3 a.m., there will be no one watching the alerts. And you will actually don't have any actions to to prevent that people will still use that password um, well um, key gen or password generator to actually find what's going on. So let me jump back to my let's say environment. This is my awesome uh, demo time. Uh, let's say slide. Let's talk a little bit about key takeaways. Um, just to be one hundred percent sure, I just scratched the surface of what's possible with Azure Automation and, and, and um, Azure Monitor action groups and whatever. Um, you have to really think in scenarios, meaning uh, that uh, if you want to monitor something, um, Azure Log Analytics is not that expensive. <clears throat> you just need to be careful that you do not dump everything in there. But in the end, the more data you have, the more you can uh, query cross data and the more you can actually have uh, insights in your environment. And you, we, we saw that it's quite easy to actually um, enable diagnostic settings or just upload metrics or whatever. So um, if you are convinced that you will need that data, make sure that you go in uh, in your own environment or whether it's a customer environment and get those diagnostic settings and those metrics in there because they are very powerful. Um, and if you already have some, let's say, historical data in there, um, it's always better than start from scratch and then building it. Uh, if you have historical data, you can, um, well, pinpoint your thresholds a little bit better. So the key takeaways, automation can be your starting point, um, and it can also be your remediation. Um, 
to start from scratch and uh, well make sure that your run books function function apps or logic apps are in there um, that because those are the ones that will do the job uh, the scheduling and the triggering and everything will be done by Azure Monitor and Alert Rules. Everything is interconnected in Azure, so use it. Don't try to think in, let's say, islands, but really try to think in uh, integration. Start learning the KQL language. I can't stress this enough. Um, if there is interest, I can always do another session on the KQL language itself. I can spend almost a couple of hours, I think, just how easy it is to get in there and how powerful it is. Um, if you want to learn KQL language, uh, just open a, a workspace, get some data in there. And there are a lot of, let's say, um, very good tutorials out there, but also very good examples out there of KQL languages. And it's with everything you can, well, make it as complex or, well, uh, as complex or hard as you really want, but start small and start learning that, that language because it's it's coming back in the entire um, in the entire uh, let's say Azure ecosystem. Uh, there are several ways of finding your right scenario. Like the question earlier on in the session, if at one point um, you uh, want to use function apps or if you want to use PowerShell or even in the logic app, feel free to do so. They are available and they are uh, valid options. Um, it's just that you choose one and try to stick with one because otherwise you have to well, maintain a lot of different uh, scenarios or a lot of different functions, whatever. And make sure everyone is on board, which is one of the, let's say, open doors I kick in. But if at one point you are there and you want to monitor and have a lot of Azure automation uh, integration with ITSM tools and whatever, um, but you're just alone in your, let's say, vision or whatever, you need to make sure that everybody uh, starts working or starts uh, running in the same direction before you can actually uh, start, well, having uh, a good uh, Azure automation and a good monitoring. So that being, being said, I'm opening for Q&A. I'm pretty sure that I'm the only one standing in between you and lunch, uh, but I'm still available if you have questions, so feel free. Yeah, there are a few people that left for lunch already, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, any questions? I was very clear, I think. Yeah, Gunnar, Maur, just unmute yourself. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, yep. So with the speed that uh, monitoring has been changing at, in Azure, mm -hmm. changes like guest VM health deprecated, uh, the Azure monitor agent popping up, but with not full feature compatibility to the older mm -hmm. agents and so on and so on. Um, what would be your recommendation to best keep up to date with best practices on implementing monitoring in Azure and specifically in relation to monitoring for VMs. To be honest, I was also a little bit, well, uh, shocked or, or well, uh, astonished that they got rid of the VM uh, help and the help explorer. Um, yeah. but, but just to be 100% sure, uh, Azure metrics, uh, uh, whether it's for VMs or everything, that won't change. Um, if you pump everything into, let's say, uh, well, at this point they have VM insights. And so so the, the, the Health Explorer or the Explorer has been migrated to VM insights. So if I, if I would have, well, give you one tip is look into VM insights, but uh, there's actually, well, I, I I know that there's a roadmap, but well, of course it's under NDA. But what I can say you is that the the core things will never be changed. It will just be um, how they actually will give you the access into the um, the portal. Eh? Meaning uh, your example of the Health Explorer, for example. Um, but the underlying things that are pumped into Log Analytics whether it's the metrics or whether it's loss or anything, those will never change. It's just the um, the insights that they will give you 
that will enhance or uh, in some cases will be deprecated uh, due to uh, large customer feedback. Let's call it like that. So to answer your question, uh, well, very quickly, I would really look into, I mean, monitoring is, is here and here to stay and it will never, uh, well, it will never be, let's say the core will never go away because that is where they, 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 their data is coming from. It's just how they are actually going to present the data to you in an easy way. Uh, that's probably going to change, but if you're going to, well, use law analytics and you use alerts, um, that will be my, well, on, in the long run, best guess. But you can always use, let's say, VM uh, insights, for example, to get insights in your VMs and then create your own uh, alert rules, for example. Exactly. Thanks, Dieter. No problem. Yeah, Dieter? I think I, th I, th I think uh, if I may also, uh, you know, you know, Microsoft is always changing, changing things and uh, uh, making things better. As I would say, so uh, there is always a reason for some things. So uh, when they do uh, something, they uh, have something in mind when they do that, do it. So, yeah. so we have we have jobs. That well, stay positive. Yeah. Stay positive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, well, the thing is, it, it's it, if if you look at it from that standpoint, we are using a system, we are using a framework which is made available for us. Um, and if you look at it from that way, um, it's it's still Microsoft who's deciding where this framework and system is going to. Huh? They are deciding the building blocks, the services we can actually use. They are providing new services. And sometimes it can be frustrating, and I'm 100% with you, it can be frustrating that, that services are going away without prior notice, or even that you've built your entire scenario on a service that is going away. Um, I once had a demo uh, because they pumped data into Log Analytics, uh, how long it normally takes to, um, to implement a patch on a, on a VM. So, and I used that data to actually calculate based on that data, how long uh, a patch window needed to be. And I had a full blown, let's say, uh, calculation model behind it. And the customer was very happy until one, well, sunny Tuesday, they called me and they say, hey, the system is down, can you check? And I found out that they completely, well, deleted that data out of um, law analytics because it wasn't used that much. They will, of course, not introduce, reintroduce that data just for me. But it's one of those things where you can really see that, well, they are moving and they're moving fast um, and they're moving fast in one direction. And if it's not your direction, of course, you need to uh, adapt. And sometimes it's good that we need to adapt because otherwise we would have still be using, uh, let's say, uh, uh, fat servers in a server rack. Huh? So, uh, but if you see the pace, I, I can fully agree that the pace from time to time is very, let's say, rapid uh, that we understand, but that customers don't understand or customers um, do not appreciate uh, that the direction is changed that much uh, in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely exactly. feels like each time I'm uh, provisioning a set of VMs for a customer, I uh, I go straight to uh, Microsoft to check what's their latest recommendation regarding which agent to use, for example. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, changes in which way I construct the alerts on the Log Analytics workspace or, or you know, which uh, table I'm targeting, you know, mm -hmm. where the... Yeah. But that's fine. Uh, that's part of the job, staying yeah. on uh, top of uh, technology. <laughs> it, it's one of the things, uh, to be honest, uh, if you see uh, the iterations that the Microsoft monitoring agent has gone through, basically in the core, uh, it's still, uh, let's say, the agent which was used uh, for uh, System Center Operations Manager. It's, uh, it's originated from there. So you, you can see how many things that they actually had to rebuild and rethink. And uh, I fully agree that at one point, backwards compatibility can be a burden. 
and it can become a burden because you can't well support or control everything. Uh, what what Microsoft now is doing, which is a very uh, good thing, is that they um, well in advance will give you a notification when you want to, let's say, uh, add something to your Azure portal that it's probably deprecated somewhere in the near future and they put a date on it as well. So you already get like a caution saying, okay, this will probably go away in the next six months. So you need to think about rethinking your scenario and rebuilding your solution. Yep. Yeah, I think we're out of time now. Yep. So, uh, um, yeah, I want to say just um, thank you for this, teacher. It was uh, great to have you here. Um, you. And hopefully we will uh, hear from you again. Yeah, if you if you have an opportunity and you want to learn more on KQL or whatever, and you see that there's still an opening, uh, just ping me, and I will be happy to actually. Uh, yeah. well, postpone my lunch <laughs> to, to, to make sure that you have some knowledge before your lunch. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's uh, the K KQL is uh, uh, something that we need to uh, bump up in our in our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, thank you and uh, have a nice weekend. Yes, thank you. Next time. Bye bye. bye.